And the plant was reacting to the physical emotions of things around it. How does it know? How do- because the white cells are the connection. Well, I can tell you that telling the National Academy of Science the universe is not built the way they think it is can be emotionally stimulating. Your emotional response is going, is communicating with the white blood cells in a, com- in a the, completely the white, separate yeah. room through brick walls. What is primary perception? Oh, not a simple one. Um, Primary perception has to do with a guy by the name of Cleve Baxter. Baxter's also fundamentally involved in that uh, because Hal Putoff and them knew about him, and so he's one that kind of got remote viewing going. Was, this was before Joe and, and that. Um, that's the name that uh, Cleve uh, gave to the effect. Now, Cleve's history, during World War II, he had been in, in counterintelligence in the Army, went to CIA when it was formed, and was the guy who developed the polygraph system that's still used. So he's teaching uh, polygraphy, and because of that, he's got scientific equipment. So the initial question was, he he was living in New York at the time, had large plants there, and he said, "I, I wonder if when I pour water into here, how long does it take to get to the leaves? A simple, straightforward question. You know, mm-hmm. So he hooks up his uh, polygraph with the, uh, like a GSR, the galvanic skin response thing. It measures moisture, right? So he puts it on, on the leaf, pours the water in, watches it. But he leaves the thing hooked up. And the way that this is going through, is, so it's going out to the polygraph, so he's keeping track of, you know, when, when the moisture changes and that. Over time, just hooked up in his apartment, he was a bachelor, and, uh, and he notices this thing's wiggling from time to time. What, what is it that's causing it? I'm not pouring water in there. <clears throat> And so he, he came to the understanding that it reacted, the plant was reacting to the physical emotions of things around it at the time. And where the experiments got really interesting was, um, well, <clears throat> he, he, he started with, uh, went over and burned the leaf. And you get a response from the polygraph. Oh, that's weird. It says, then it got to the point where he would think about burning the leaf and the plants responding. And you're going, this is in the primary. What is it that this guy's thinking about doing harm to a plant and it is physically responding in a way that can be monitored? Uh <clears throat> Step beyond that was we went into monitoring oral leukocytes, white cells from the mouth. And he was able to do, um, uh, he would take, take a, a person's sample, put it inside a Faraday cage, it's running through, you have electrodes in it that are running back through the polygraph that's being recorded, then he'd film it. And then the individual would be exposed. Sometimes what they do is have them send them home and say, watch certain TV programs because you know that certain emotional events are going to happen, but you don't know when. So by recording them together, you're able to see that the leaves are responding to the emotional event that the person is observing at another location. Oh, it gets better. (laughs) <laughs> Believe me. Uh, it, is huh? it in the same room? No. How does it know? How do- Because the white cells are the connection. Shit. The person's white cells are being monitored, even though they, now where we were interested, uh, you know, did Joe come up with General Dozier, that case? 
where he was kidnapped. Well, that was one of our interests. How is, is there a way that you can monitor people at a distance if you had, the, say, the cells somewhere, and simple things like alive or dead? You know, that would tell you, you know, what kind of rescue operations you might want to launch. Uh, so it gets interesting. So one of the things I did was, again, I had Cleve under contract, and I replicate the system at Fort Belvoir. It was really interesting. I, we went out there to do it. He was completely cooperative and showed us how to do it. So I had a uh, senior scientist from a night vision lab go with me and <clears throat> to watch it because he's going to build the system for me. And uh, so I, I said, uh, okay, here's, here's all the material, how it goes. And he goes, but there's a piece missing. I said, well, the piece missing is what I'll take care of. And in fairness, he said, look, I have chosen this much of the universe for me. You can move things about in there, but don't tell me I have to relearn physics because I don't want to hear it. In fairness, he replicated it, and I was replicating what Phil was doing, or what uh, Cleve was doing uh, back at uh, Fort uh, Belvoir. So one of the times I went out to, uh, uh, he was in the San Diego area, so I am um, um, out there. So we set up a three screen. So I'm the one who donates the cells. They've got me on the polygraph and on the video camera. And I let them square around and get things that would be emotional. Sound. I could beat the polygraph, but not the white cells. I mean, the white cells said there's an emotional contact and the polygraph is... No deception indicated. Wow. Now, if you wanted the real wow, comes later. Um, <clears throat> so, 87 time frame, General Thurman, who's then the vice, uh, gets the National Academy of Science or National Research Council, and he knows that the Army has been looking at a lot of weird stuff. And so he asked them to do a study of all of the unusual things we had doing. And I appeared before him several times. And the initial is, you got the wrong group. Nice folks, all that. But there was only one person who knew anything about psi phenomena. And he was from a, a founding member of the Skeptic Society. I mean, he was... Well, we, we could ask about him. That's Ray Hyman. We can discuss him later. But <clears throat> so I got the wrong folks. So we've told them about the various things uh, that we're doing. And um, so they're going to have a meeting at Scripps, which happens to be in San Diego. Said, so, hey, this is a good place we can do a show and tell. You know, we will take them to Cleve's lab. By this time, Cleve is, is out in the San Diego area. He's running his polygraph school there. And he's on the sixth floor of a, a building. I, when I draw it, I usually, if you're looking from the top down, one wing is the classroom where these things are going. The other, actually where he lives and has all of this uh, equipment going on. So, <laughs> same thing. When you're doing a thing for the academy, yeah, you don't want to know it worked yesterday. You want to know things are working today. So I had arrived early, and the group is coming. And um, so they agreed to take two. Well, what happens is I donate cells, and we set it up you know, so it's monitoring me. And then, so... They come, and two of them go to the lab, and everybody else goes into the uh, classroom where Cleve is going to give a description. Now, Cleve was one of those people where you ask him what time it is, and you get the history of chronometers. <laughs> so what happens is then they're watching, and he says, oh, God, you know, he's just 
you know, Cleve, you got to get going. You know, you're, you're losing these folks <clears throat> because he's going to give kind of the history, and I'm going to say, by the way, I've independently replicated this at Fort Belvoir. So what happens is finally he gets off and he gets my turn, so I, I stand up to talk, and I'm basically got to hurry it up. In about 90 seconds, his lab assistant comes running in and says, what happened 90 seconds ago? I said, well, that's when I started talking. He says, well, this machine just went wild. I can show you these tapes. I got something. It is now just going on. Well, I can tell you that telling the National Academy of Science the universe is not built the way they think it is can be emotionally stimulating because <laughs> that's what I was telling them, you know. And um, so what happened is, uh, and you see throughout the time that I'm talking until they run in and they rip it off, um, yeah, it just went wild. And I am considerable distance from my way. We had forgotten that they were running because they were going to set up to do somebody else. So let me, let me, let me make sure I'm uh, understanding, that, understanding this correctly. So you have a polygraph machine hooked up to your cells. To your white cells. Right. You have nothing hooked up to you. No. When you get an emotional response. But I um, understand I am a considerable distance away. There's a number of brick walls between me and that thing. Yes. So and, your emotional response is going, is communicating with the white blood cells in a, com in a the, completely the white, separate yeah. room through brick walls. The, and the, the oral, polygraph the, machine is measuring. Yeah. The emotional response. Yeah, and it went wild. This is why you told me not to be messing around with photons and electrons the other day on the phone, isn't it? Well, uh, there is no rational explanation for why we had. I had done it at fifty miles or so. It was from Belvoir to um, uh, Arlington Hall. If, at that time, Enscom was at Arlington Hall Station, and I had the lab set up down at Fort Belvoir. So I am going to see Stubblebine, and I know I'm going to tell him no to something he does not want to hear. And sure enough, you know, allowing now this isn't one where you have the instantaneous, you know, absolute control, but I drive up there and you definitely see a response to my cells, you know, 50 miles uh, from 50 the event. 50 miles? Yep. 50 miles. Yep. Hey, everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.